It's my first time in Canada. Will you say, welcome to Canada? Welcome to Canada. I got a little intense there for a moment. We gotta stop doing shit like that, though. That cave made lots of uncomfortable noises. All right, we're done. We are about to embark upon a very, very long journey in that beautiful red sky chariot, the Robinson R66. This helicopter can carry 927 pounds of people and gear, has a cruise speed of 115 knots and a maximum range of 350 nautical miles. However, Matt has added this reserve tank to give us a little safety net when flying between the handful of airports that sell jet fuel in Canada and Alaska. And we'll be flying this thing all the way from here, Springville, Utah, yeah. through Canada to Alaska. This is something we've planned on doing for about a year, but it's only just materializing because right now we have good conditions weather-wise and Matt has been flying this helicopter for a year, which is probably more than enough experience. My job during this trip will be to give Matt positive encouragement. I'll be navigating, checking weather, but really Matt will be dealing with the hardest aspects of the flight, and that is actually flying the helicopter. The Robinson is a great helicopter. It's very nimble in the mountains, but it doesn't handle turbulence very well. Other than that, we hope to see amazing things along our route and do amazing things along the way. We've brought some running gear, some hiking gear, some climbing gear, in the hopes that we'll be able to get out in isolated spots. I don't have to bring this. Again, this is like, Right here, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six pounds. Okay, let's put it in the maybe pile. Okay, this is the maybe pile. These are my Alaska shit kickers. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, I don't have to have these, I got waterproof, but this is just like walking around at night or just getting out. It's just like if it's raining. Uh, here's all my, all my clothes. But it, that's probably 25 pounds. This is all my camera equipment. Okay. This is weighty, but this is like, if it gets cold and it, the helicopter doesn't start, this is like life support right here. I've never used it, but I don't know. Out in the middle of nowhere, I think we need this. For sure, that's a starter stick. This is not necessary. And then when you've landed safely and you're just sitting there, you're like, why don't I have a chair? <laughs> Seriously, why did I not bring a chair? And you think it's a ton, but it's probably two pounds. These are our food items that we'll just, uh, it's like breakfast stuff. This is like, if we're gonna run, this is running stuff up the mountain, breakfast. Radio, just in case. Yeah, that I was gonna text you that. One of us yeah. is gonna be on the ground, one of us in the sky. Yeah house right here it's a four-man house sleeping bag pillow and pad uh, maybe at least throw a couple water bottles in i think yeah i think the water will fit can we fit all this crap in here i, I don't know so. the weight i'm probably thinking that's a hundred pounds i don't know that we can fit all this crap into the helicopter The hardest part was learning how to fly a helicopter, but now that that's taken care of, now we've just like gone to the next level of flying international. It's like a whole new set of rules and like regulations and crap you need to bring with you. So 
I just got on, I was on the phone with customs and other pilots that I know to let me walk me through this process. And uh, looks like we've got to call Canada to let them know we're coming in. But we also got to call the United States to let them know we're leaving. Here, I've got all the numbers that we need. Basically, don't show up in someone's country without them knowing you're coming. It's like giving your friends a head up. I'm coming to your house. Here's an hour heads up so they can be prepared to receive you and don't see some red flying bird crossing their border and have no idea who they are. I know we can do this because we don't have to do it all at once. We just have to do a couple hours at a time. And I know we can do that. I know we can fly a couple hundred miles, land, get gas, check weather, look at the next step, and we can always come back. Oh, that wandered pack, sorry. We got stuff in there. Ooh, gotta remember. Okay, ooh, that's a hot seat. Able. Here we go, first start up. Information Zulu 1755 Zulu observation. Wind variable at three, visibility one zero. We hit direct to KGPI. Okay, plugged in. Spanish for traffic helicopter November 9 or 66 six, South of Juliet, southwest. Uh, we're on the southwest hangars. We're going to pick up via VFR north departure. We're going to cross the active at Alpha 2 to the east. Uh, to I-15, then we'll be northbound. All right, let's see how much power this pulls, okay? Yeah, I'll be watching. That's 50. That's 60. Not bad. We're on ground effect now. 80. 85. Just gonna slowly creep forward to get that down. That should drop. It's boiling in this helicopter. I know. Holy crap, I forgot my window open. All right. Oh, we took off successfully, still at 80. We're off. Our goal today is to fly to Glacier Park International Airport in Kalispell, Montana. It's 527 miles away in a straight line. We'll probably have to fill up once, and we're trying to beat a storm that's moving in to northern Montana. All right, so we're about uh, five hours into our adventure right here. The weather's starting to get a little bit cloudy, but I just kept looking in the back of the helicopter and like, we've got more room and we could probably sacrifice maybe like 20 more pounds. And I just, I really wanted an alpaca raft, a raft to get us maybe from river to river or through a glacier or up on a big mountain lake. And it just, I started having major like doubts about why I left mine home. and. I was just killing myself. So we just called up a business. We called up Alpaca Rafts out of Colorado. They have a, uh, they distribute it out here to Missoula, Montana. Oh, same music. Nice. Dude, we just picked up 10 knots with this music. <laughs> uh, yeah, headwind. Good River Sports, this is Todd. Hey Todd, do you have any alpaca rafts for sale in stock right now? In stock? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, do you have a place where I could land a helicopter and pick up two in your lot? I'm sorry, say that again? I'm just flying in a helicopter. I'm on my way to Alaska. I was wondering if I could land a helicopter in your on your property and buy two of them from you. No, I don't think so. Okay, how close? There's not that much room here. 
Um, you have to land out at the airport or somewhere else and get a ride in. What if I gave you a credit card number and you met me out at the airport and dropped him off to me? Uh, we could probably make that happen. I, I, I can't do it. Let me see if uh, one of my guys can. It's, it's actually, yeah, I might just about out of here. I have a prior engagement, but let me see if I can round one of these guys up to do that. That'd be awesome. Thanks. We're going to land. They're going to deliver us two brand new rafts to our helicopter. Danny's going to get out, go grab them, and we're going to throw two rafts in the back. So we picked up our first souvenir for the trip. We've landed in Kalispell, Montana, right on the border with Canada. We're gonna stay overnight here and then we're gonna clear Canadian customs in the morning. You're wondering where this car came from and where those stains in that seat came from? I don't know. This is called a courtesy car. It's provided by the airport at some airports. But right now we're getting a hotel room. We're gonna drop off our bags and then we're gonna go for a run at the Whitefish Mountain Resort. Oh my gosh. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Danny. Okay. <laughs> what? What? How did it know? Yeah. How did I it know? It was meant to be here. All right, here we go. We are going on a run up to the top of Whitefish Mountain Resort. Here we are, day one. I'm gonna push start on my watch. We're gonna run. Matt and I are doing a quick run to the summit of Whitefish Resort. We're trying to get to the summit and back before it gets dark enough for the bears not to know we are deer. And we've made it to the top of Whitefish Mountain Resort. And there's still a little light left for us to run down with. But came up with Danny on trail, and now we're gonna head back down the same trail. Hopefully our disgusting scent will have scared away all the bears. Cool trail, awesome mountain, and amazing view. So I'm just basically trying to figure out which way we want to fly tomorrow. We could fly 445 miles to basically Campbell River. If the weather's good, that would be really, really cool. Or we could fly Jasper Banff line. My hair, this is what happens, you know, when you fly this long and you just, you don't want any gel in there. You just want your hair to breathe, you know, have a good night. I really need to sleep, but I just can't stop staring at these maps. Like, I want to go, go, go. I really want to get, like, into Canada, check. And then, I not only want to get into Canada, I want to get way up into it so that Alaska is, like, on the radar for the following day that we could potentially, if the weather's good, fly into Ketchikan and do another uh, stop at the border, you know, the border patrol. And once we get cleared with customs there, then like Alaska's all ours. It's just every single minute we fly in the helicopter, it's gonna be unbelievable new terrain in hostile environment in, in crazy places that no one really has ever been. So that's kind of the whole point of the helicopter trip is to be places where no one probably has ever seen um, and to get really like intimate, low and crazy cool places. But right now, you know, we're in Montana. People have seen what we've seen. But gosh, after tomorrow, it's all, it's all new territory.